Thank you so much for being here today, Paige. And it's great to have you here um, at Stonington Gallery's uh, Artist Talk. And today we're going to talk a little bit about your work and um, your, uh, your medium, the background of your work, um, your background as well, and the work that you're doing in your community. We're really excited to hear about that. Um, so a little bit about Stonington Gallery. We exhibit a collection of contemporary masterworks from the Pacific Northwest Coast in Alaska. And we have served Seattle since 1979. The gallery is respected for the depth and quality of our collection, exceptional service, and our knowledgeable staff. And for visitors wishing to understand the character of Seattle and the wider Northwest Coast, our gallery is a rich cultural introduction, the proof of vibrant living indigenous cultures of our region. Our mission is to provide the ideal environment for the presentation, enjoyment, and understanding of premier contemporary art, the Pacific Northwest Coast and Alaska, and to foster greater appreciation for these art forms. So here today we have Paige Pettibon, who is an artist based in Tacoma, Washington. Paige is Black, White, and Salish from the Confederated Salish and Kootenai tribes. Paige is influenced by her native Northwest community by learning the Lushootse language, tribal songs, dances, and traditions. Her medium is focused on acrylic painting, but has extended to fiber art, beadwork, and other media, which are all very incredibly beautiful. Um, she has always identified as a painter, but in recent years, she has added sewing, weaving, and jewelry making into her repertoire. Her paintings lead toward a realistic style. However, she also enjoys exploring new ideas and techniques. She loves to sew blankets and creates jewelry that mixes modern elements with traditional designs. So we've noticed in the gallery specifically, a lot of your paintings include female subjects specifically. Um, what is your inspiration and process for choosing the subject in your paintings? Well, growing up, I would say that uh, I felt there was a disconnect with a lot of the fine art that I was viewing. And it portrayed uh, women as like objects and, you know, the painter as like a very powerful male that, you know, dominated that space. And I remember, you know, one of my influences was Frida Kahlo and just the freedom she had in her self portraits and um, adding elements of like her experience and her pain and trauma and uh, putting it on canvas and having no fear of what the public viewed it as. And so for me, I, I felt my own voice and strength in uh, people in my community that I believe are important people and uplifting their image and reclaiming that space in the fine arts uh, world. And um, I find that I just tend to have a feminine aesthetic and I like to um, use that aesthetic as a way to connect with the person that I'm painting as well. Uh, and where it's not just my voice being expressed, but uh, their story being told and me as the medium. So there's a, there's a, a, a lateral power rather than like they're my object and I have the power to con convey or portray them through my lens. I like to have a, um, a balance of power with the work that I do. It's not just the end result, but it's also the process. Mm -hmm. So yeah, those are, yeah. Although I have a, a tendency to have a feminine um, aesthetic um, I think that's just naturally who I am in general, uh, but it's not exactly where I see myself staying into. It's not like a parameter that I have. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. That's so inspiring. Um, how long have you been painting? I'm curious. Uh, well, I would say like painting with acrylics was an accessible art form from the age of like 12. So like, you know, I'm going through puberty. I have like these big feelings and <laughs> I had a really hard time articulating my feelings. And I think my parents felt like, oh, let's just 
you know, she's really good at art. She likes to draw. Let's, let's facilitate that. And so at, you know, at, I would say at the age of like 12, 13, I would, uh, I was starting to paint and, and write down my feelings and just exploring that. So I would say my strong suit uh, is painting and that started at a young age. Cool. I love that. I can relate. <laughs> um, that's awesome. And so how does being, we're all very curious too, um, how does being at multiple intersections of racial identity impact your artwork or themes that you employ in your work? I would say a great deal. Uh, you know, there's a lot of complexities when it comes to um, being mixed race, you know, uh, people, I don't know exactly how people view me, but I've been asked questions like, oh, how come, you know, you don't show your such and such side as much? Mm -hmm. And to me, I think that um, it's kind of frustrating because it's like, I am who I am and I don't, I don't have any sort of like intention in expressing like certain races to have a certain feedback for certain people, I guess. It's just, mm -hmm. I am, I, I, I'm reclaiming my culture. I'm reclaiming my identities and that manifests in different ways or expresses in different ways. And um, so I, I try to not deny any of that. And I, and I think through my artwork, I, I want to have it be a space of celebration of these mixed uh, identities and not to um, conceal it and not to, um, I wanna also challenge people's ideas of what uh, an indigenous person looks like. Uh, you know, it, 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 we all have different phenotypes and uh, I want, People like um, on my mom's side of the family, you know, we all look very different. You know, some of us are very light and some of us are very dark and we're all indigenous and we're all black and we all have white in us too. So I think um, being proud of our heritage and having it entwined with my artwork may tell the viewer, uh, you know, we have a pride in our cultures and we have pride in um, who we are as a people too, in that there's uh, connections that we have that uh, with land and place and with each other that are very important. And I try to put that in the work that I do, that it's um, not just our racial identity, but our cultural identity that's really important mm -hmm. and how we relate to each other. Um, and, and, you know, uh, in a lot of the work that I have, there's a natural element to in our connection with land, which is really important to think of um, culture as being part of the land, right? Uh, being someone who is learning the Shootseed, the traditional land, uh, or the traditional language of, the, of this land that we live on, and the connection the Shootseed has with the land. Uh, you know, our words are considered onomatopoeias. Uh, the word for ocean is holch, which sounds like the ocean waves crashing. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's finding our relationship in place, even though I'm not Puyallup, I'm not um, a Pacific Northwest tribal member. I'm, I'm Salish from Montana, but I was born and raised here. My mom was born and raised here. My dad was too. So it's, um, it's building that relationship with community and land. Mm -hmm. That's really powerful, really interesting way of looking at it. Um, I've never really thought about, so thank you for sharing that. Um, so tell me about your inspiration for and the story behind your latest painting at Stonington Gallery titled How We Rebuild Our World. Uh, yeah, so um, the Stonington reached out to me and said they wanted to have an exhibition that focused on um, an uplifting message, which I th think was 
so it was really great to work on and really great to think about. And um, y'all advised us to think about traditional stories possibly, or, you know, um, some guidance along that, right? Which I, I love that type of uh, prompt as an artist. Uh, and I also love being part of these group exhibitions in that way too, and seeing how everyone takes that prompt and um, expresses it. So for me, I was thinking about a lot of different stories and the one that really struck me was uh, Muskrat Rebuilding the World. And that, that story has come up a lot. Um, you know, the great flood, everything was washed out. And uh, with the help of all the animals, uh, musk muskrat was the one that was like bringing the dirt from the bottom of the flood, of the water, and bringing it up and building earth again. Mm -hmm. And I just think of us being the animals. I think of some of us sometimes playing the role as muskrat and um, and just like coming together for a better cause. We have so many different um, systemic issues that are happening right now and it can get overwhelming. And I think if we play into our strengths, mind being an artist, um, we can be part of rebuilding the world. And so that was the, the story I was thinking of, like the, how are we rebuilding the world today? And, um, and then I added the cedar boughs because uh, cedar is healing and is medicine. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of people will like use cedar boughs to bathe and clean themselves and thinking about like, you know, sanitation and mm -hmm. up bad energy. And uh, so that's also the, you know, the imagery that we have there. And just thinking about uh, Stephanie being, um, you know, the person that I painted and she's such a positive energy and she's a really good role model. And she has another form of rebuilding the world with the work that she does too. And can you speak more about the jewelry that she's wearing on her nose? If, does that represent something? That, so she is wearing, uh, she's clinket. And so she's wearing traditional, like traditional and modern uh, clothing, which I think is uh, another expression of just like, you know, being an indigenous person today. And mm -hmm. it's like, we're not all wearing, you know, regalia from a long time ago, mm -hmm. you know, we, we wear, regalia mixed with like modern clothing. So she's got a, a fur collar with like a denim red jacket, which I just think is like a really good, um, a really good example of how we are today. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we don't wear regalia, sometimes we mix regalia with our street clothes. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, yeah, so she's wearing a, a, a traditional jewelry of her, tribe I love that it's like that sounds very accurate just from speaking with other indigenous artists that's really awesome how you portrayed that in this piece and did the colors have any significance the cho the chosen colors that you used for like the background well the exhibition is it was you know it's winter mm -hmm. so when I think of winter I think of that dark rich purple blue and then I used a um, aluminum foil mm -hmm. uh, for the muskrat design, which has a reflective quality. So I think of, you know, winter solstice and having um, it be the time to like retreat and reflect. Um, and also just like uh, something shiny and something dark too. I love that. That's awesome. That's so cool. Um, for the next painting here, um, can you tell me a little bit more of your inspiration um, behind an earlier piece that's in Stonington as well? This piece is it's so beautiful and um, very powerful um, that, yeah, it just really like 
it's very emotional as well. Um, can, can you talk a little bit about your inspiration behind that piece as well? Yeah, so Kayla Gayet is my best friend. She is a culture keeper. She is um, Hickory Apache, so she's um, not from here. And, but she carries on the traditions like I do because we we're both born and raised here. And so we respect the land that we live on, learning the language and carry on the songs and culture of the Muckleshoot, Kyala, Nisqually, um, you know, tribes of the Pacific Northwest and also building relationships with them as well. Uh, this image to me, it has, a, it does have an emotional effect to it, but I think the, when I think of my friend Kayla, I think of her as someone being very strong, very resilient, very smart, and um, very intention, intentional with her, like, with what she says and, like, how she moves forward, how she conducts herself in the world. And I think um, it comes across with her expression and also just, like, um, the, the way she's, like, looking in you know, at the viewer. So I, I wanted her to be the person um, that I paint for this because the exhibition was a focus on uh, women culture carriers. And then also thinking about the message of, um, you know, our movement today for missing murdered indigenous women and, and children and how it's, um, it's a really hard conversation to have. Mm -hmm. It is important to talk about, and it's also important to um, support families that are affected by this. And then also just like um, building awareness too. Mm -hmm. I, I also think like as a painter who tends to paint women, it would be something like, I couldn't go on without, you know, having something that ex expresses this movement as well. So mm -hmm. I think like it is my responsibility to, to support these stories. Yeah. Not necessarily like tell the story, tell the story, but to like support the stories that are being told. And also like, um, it also strengthens like our place and community too. Mm -hmm. And we do have very specific tribes with very specific cultures, uh, but we also face very universal issues in like Native America. So it's, you know, it, I, I hope that this painting to the viewer like reflects all of those nuances of being a woman today. Yeah. Did you feel like this piece was um, like the timing of creating this piece felt very intuitive to your, you know, personal experience as far as like the universal universal themes that you were kind of learning about, or, um, or I mean, you know, maybe not directly personal, but like in the community, like it just kind of felt like you needed it needed to come out at that yeah. moment. Yeah, so at that time, I, I was uh, going to school at uh, Evergreen uh, in the Native Pathways program. And that quarter we had um, Indigenous feminism was our theme. So I got to hear my classmates' stories and how they were affected by missing murdered Indigenous women. And also just the systemic um, policies that are the reasons why it's happening and um, also why like a lot of voices are being silenced. So having that being the framework I was working on and then also having the prompt by the Stoning 10 in um, having a, a indigenous women theme or prompt uh, it just was really fitting for the time too. So, so that was like the background of what was going on at that time. Also, um, I mean, also, I was also influenced by 
we were asked, my canoe fam family was asked to go to the Bernie Sanders uh, rally at the Tacoma Dome. And they asked the Pacific Northwest tribes and canoe families to come and talk about missing murdered indigenous women and how, um, and everyone wore red and we sang a, a Lummi song about our uh, stolen sisters. And so um, that was that was like early on in the year. And then like in the spring we had the show. So I just think like there was a, definitely a moment being had at that time and um, influenced the painting. Definitely. It sounds like there's a lot of momentum that just kind of came to fruition in different ways. It's really awesome. Um, thank you for sharing that. And can you talk about when you got started getting involved in um, the community, like with art projects and more community focused art um, and what draws you to work on, to work on them today? Uh, so it's been a gradual like uh, thing. Uh, I, okay, so I'm almost 35. Uh, and when I was 25, I, I knew that I had to make some changes. I wasn't living my best self. And so I would say that was the inception. It was like, I need to, I need to figure out how to build a world that I feel like a part of and can contribute to what is my place? What is my purpose? Mm -hmm. So when I was 25, I was like, I just, I need to slow it down and just be a better person. So first and foremost, it was like healing from within. Um, and then there was like no one time where I was just like, oh, I'm going to be a community member today. It was like, I was being asked to come to do this thing. I was asked to to be part of the Lashutsi community. I was, you know, someone that was becoming accountable for my actions and people were recognizing that. And I was still strengthening my abilities in my art and um, learning a lot, I think is also a huge factor of being a really good artist for me. Uh, as you can see in my work, learning about, um, learning about, um, you know, like missing and murdered indigenous women and learning about uh, uh, indigenous feminism really impacted my work at that time. And then one of my first paintings at the Stonington, it was uh, a painting that had our creation story and it had our Lashutzi prayer. So learning Lashutzi has impacted my artwork greatly. And it's not, a one-way street like you have to be part of the community you have to be giving back to there's a reciprocity happening so I try to give back as as much as I can because the community gives me so much and has supported me along the way so I you know I would say when I started investing in myself and like growing and developing myself that's when I started becoming involved in my community too um, there is a balance to it as well, knowing when to step back and, and knowing when to step up. I, um, I try to balance my weekly schedule to, you know, at, like this morning, for instance, this <laughs> morning, I, um, I slept in because I needed to. And I, I worked on a, a little painting for the day with mediums that I'm not exactly comfortable with for about an hour. And then I had a meeting with um, storytellers talking about our creation story because we have a creation story telling happening weekly for for uh, winter quarter and uh, making sure that we are listening to our um, recordings of uh, this one specifically is Jerry Keenum. He is telling a um, our creation story, and so each week we have a couple of language teachers and Lushutsi speakers coming together and telling the story in little sections, so that it's more, um, you know, so people can actually obtain it. Actually, 
spend just like an hour once a week to to listen to this for for our community and for ourselves too and making sure that these stories are being told and that people uh know our our creation story so um just through a community group or like what kind of or what kind of group is this so the Piaf tribal language department is one of their projects for that they're working on um and it's kind of hard to say like how we've come together but my cousin amber hayward she is the director for the Piaf tribal language department and she loves working with artists she loves bringing artists and she loves bringing teachers and um into the Lashutsi speaking community that live here and that participate in our community so that it's not just one net that's being cast there's multiple nets being cast with a Lashutsi uh focus right and bringing people in through language like with language and um and you you know reclaiming culture in that way uh, it is kind of hard because like when people are like, wait, do you work for the Piaf Tribal Language Department? It's like, no, I work with them. We have a, we have a shared common uh, purpose, um, but I, I don't work for them. So mm -hmm. very gotcha. good. And I think that's like what's really beautiful about um, a lot of our tribal communities are looking at different ways to bring people in having a um, not just like one subject being language but having language being the through line for all the work that we do so um, you know language is like the the clear like goal of like language revitalization however how we get there is going to be different with our strengths right mm -hmm. me artist and then you know someone being a, a teacher at the tribal school so coming together and for a common purpose. Um, so I had that and then um, and then talking to my mentor, my Lashutzi mentor, talking about Multilingual Institute and trying to get people to sign up for my language class for this quarter. Uh, Omicron kind of put a little bit of a hold on a lot of things mm -hmm. um, for the last week. So we're gonna start a little bit late. But you know, it's it's being flexible and adjusting to what's happening and knowing mm -hmm. that um, I got people that want to learn language and may be counting on me. So, you know, reaching out to them, they may need a little bit of a a, a reminder of push of hey, I'm here for you. So that's something that I'm going to do. And then I also was approached to come up with a logo for um Highland School District is coming up with a program called Salmon Strong. And it's uh, with the focus of um, uh, like ecology and science and stu students. And so, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a very mixed day, but mm -hmm. it like fills me up, you know, and I, I like trying different things and learning and having connections in all these kinds of ways. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so it's not just like working with youth, but also working with people my age or working with elders and having, you know, material content and uh, accessibility for for those folks. Despite COVID and Omicron, like, what is something that you're excited about this year? Uh, I was asked to do. Well, I wasn't asked. Uh, there was a call for a public art piece at this park that I grew up at. I saw the call and I was like, oh, like I, that is for me. I grew up at that park. I have strong ties to that area. Um, so I worked really hard at developing a concept and uh, a proposal for that park. And I, I, got, I got accepted to, to do that project. And um, at the end of the year in December, the project is going to be completed. So that is something that I'm looking forward to having a public art piece um, and having it in the neighborhood I grew up at. That's amazing, congratulations. 
Thank you. So cool. I love that. Um, and my last question for you today is what advice do you have for aspiring Native artists? Uh, I would say that um, find the people that make you feel good and find the people that are going to give you good positive feedback, like I was saying. Make stuff all the time. Uh, find time to do it. I think that's like been the biggest, um, the, the biggest thing that I've heard from my community is like, oh, I want to do this, but I don't have time. You don't need to make a masterpiece. Like just take 15 minutes to draw something or whatever your chosen medium is. Take 15 minutes to work towards something or to um, uh, practice something. It doesn't have to be good, but do try your best and to um, just continuously make like, all the time and if it doesn't look good that's okay and to learn to give what you make away I think that's one of the hardest things like as an artist is like you get really attached to things too so learning to give away your artwork and um, surround yourself with people that are going to support you in whatever way you need sometimes I'll call up one of my good friends Asia Tail and ask her insight on certain things. And, and it's just really nice to have another artist creative that's in the art world that, I, that relates with me and that can give me really good sound advice. Um, be a part of your community as well. Always try to learn, always listen respectfully to others. If they're trying to tell you something, they think you're important enough to uh, tell that information to. So always be grateful. Um, when, when folks are giving you um, information. Um, be involved in your community, find, find what, um, find your space and find out like what you can do to give back as well. I guess like the only advice I can really give is like what's worked out for me. So if anything that I've said during this interview, if you were having questions about, um, you know, in yourself, maybe, maybe if I said something that resonates with you, maybe focusing on one thing and, and see how that goes uh, for four weeks, right? And then adding something else to it. I don't have all the answers. I just know what worked for me. Um, but, but note that like, I would love for any artist to connect with me um, if, they, if they want to, to just um, build support and get out there. But, um, you know, it is really hard, but keep doing it because your work may change someone else's life one day. So I'd say keep it up. It is important work. It is absolutely. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, thank you, Paige, so much. I really appreciate your time and just the thoughts and just, you know, everything that you shared with us today behind your work was just really inspiring. And your day-to-day -day is inspiring and like how you're living your life as an artist and also supporting your community. It's just awesome. So thank you for being you and thank you for sharing everything. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Of course.